scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Bible and the role of the church. I did say that the state of any nation and any society is a reflection of the kind and the quality of the spiritual voices within that territory. Hallelujah. Amen. That the conviction of the average believer is a reflection of the kind of training and mentorship that that individual has gone through or otherwise. We did agree that when there is the absence of the knowledge of the one true God, when there are no teaching priests and when there are no laws that society would plunge naturally into decadence hallelujah he says for a long time israel had no true god no teaching priest and no law i did tell us in the afternoon that if we want to restore the spirit of revival we must forget about government and industries and get to the church the church has always been responsible for enforcing and promoting God's program on earth. Are we together? And um, we examined a few things. I did say that there are three factors that affect the quality of believers within any territory. Thank you for the sound. Thank you. Number one, I said the absence of genuine spiritual encounters. When a believer, when an individual does not sustain a healthy spiritual encounter, number one, that person will most likely not be saved, even though around the truth. Just because you are around the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it. Many people were around the truth. Some made money from the truth. Other people used the truth to promote their personal ambitions. Only a few were changed by the truth. Hallelujah. So you can be in church, you can be a worker in church, we observed, and yet not have any encounter with Jesus. I remember challenging us in the afternoon that we must return to a point where Jesus Christ becomes the epicenter of our Christian adventure. More than miracles, more than prophecy, more than the gifts of the Spirit, we must restore Jesus. It says, John 17 and verse 3, and this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever, this blessing is for whosoever, whosoever believes in him, that individual should not perish but have everlasting life. That God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Are we together? Romans chapter 10, when you read from verse 9 and 10, it says the word is nigh thee in your mouth and in your heart, even the word of faith that we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lordship of Jesus, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he said thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made, even unto salvation. 
So we said that believers need to come to a point where they encounter Jesus Christ as the only key to the kingdom. There are many keys of the kingdom, but there is only one key to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Number two, the second reason I did observe also that beyond just giving your life to Jesus, you must sustain hunger. Remember our teaching on hunger? That hunger is a proof of health. When an individual is sick, among the many initial signs is a loss of appetite. So the moment there is a loss of spiritual appetite is a sign that your life is under attack. Then number two, we said the second factor that affects the quality of believers within a territory is the presence or the absence of discipleship and methodical mentorship. When believers are not discipled, there will be a haphazard growth pattern. Their growth will not be sustained. It will not be methodical. The early church practiced that. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. The Bible says, and the apostles, they submitted to the doctrine of the apostles and of fellowship, of prayer, and of breaking of bread. That was the pattern. They continued steadfastly, the Bible says. Hallelujah. It is for the intent of maturing the saints that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. The Bible says for the perfecting or maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry till we all come to a state in the spirit called the unity of faith. Is that true? Yes. To the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. He says... That we henceforth be not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. So we gain stature and maturity to the degree to which we are mentored. And the secret of the growth of the believer is doctrine. Doctrine is not an opinion. Doctrine are truths that are already scripturally established. Are we together now? Yes. Teaching opinions and personalized dealings will only produce various shades of error. There are dealings that happen to an individual based on his work with God. It is profitable as far as the path earmarked for that individual is concerned, but may not be applicable to any other person. Are we together? There are three biblical conditions for any thought to be called a doctrine. Number one, it must be practiced in the Old Testament. We must see that truth or that thought reflected in the Old Testament. Number two, it must be captured in the ministry and the teachings of Jesus. Number three, it must be captured in the ministry and the teachings of the early church. Any thought or truth that does not pass this tripartite test cannot be called doctrine. Even if it is truth. Hallelujah. So we must minimize turning our personalized dealings into doctrines. In our work with God, there are times where God gives us customized trainings based on our peculiar personalities or his, the nature and the character of our call. And by working in keeping with those those personalized dealings, we can produce phenomenal results. In mentoring younger believers, we have to be wise to not turn those personalized dealings into doctrines. Let me give you one. I've not started my teaching tonight. We're recapping on afternoon. Are we together? So, if, if God seeing and knowing my vulnerability prohibits me to not have, say for instance, more than a million dollars in my account. That can be a unique instruction he gave me. Based on something about my personality, he knows. He has studied my vulnerability and he has seen that if I step into certain levels of material affluence, it could affect my focus. He can give me a restriction that is unique to only me. And by obeying that restriction to honor his voice, I will excel in a certain way. Chances are excellent that when you come to ask me the secret of my results, I will, among the many things I will tell you, I will describe for you the unique limitations I have put in my life. But that does not mean it is doctrine. Because your call may demand 
that you don't keep that kind of thing. And if you now subscribe to the nature of my personalized dealing, you may be hurting your call and your efficiency. Are we together? So the church has been in a lot of trouble because there are many truths that work for individuals based on their work with God but did not pass the test to become doctrine. So because every man of God is naturally emotionally connected to the principles you honor to get to where you were, chances are excellent that when you are teaching, your communication will largely be your experience. It is the reason why we must exalt the word of God above experiences because our experiences only worked for us but they have not been tried. The word of God has been tried seven times. Are we together now? And then number three, we wrapped up by saying the third factor that affects the quality of believers in any territory is the abundance of the presence or otherwise of models individuals who embody and personify dimensions every realm in the spirit can be personified in an individual in fact that is one of the ways that god preserves his dimensions when you say the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob is the same god but his expression across these three people are different are we together now the god of abraham is the one who blesses and lifts the God of Isaac is the one who expands and preserves. The God of Jacob is the one who reveals himself in an encounter. It is the same God, but the dimensions are not the same. Rapha will bring you healing, not prosperity. Jairah will bring you prosperity, not healing. Are we together? So we must have models, physical models, that will help to enhance transformation. Kenya must know what authentic prophetic ministry looks like. Kenya must know what authentic apostolic ministry looks like. Kenya must know what authentic disciple looks like. Talking about what is not right is not the issue. There must be models that embody what is the genuine approach. Transformation is difficult without references. There must be a reference. It says follow them who through faith and patience... There are some them that are worthy of following. So, Kenya must have sufficient people, not just a few, not just one or two. There has to be a, an abundance of models. What does kingdom prosperity look like? More than teaching it, an individual must become that living epistle of what it means to be blessed and lifted by God. An individual must embody what it means to carry the miracle working power of God. Today we are able to contend and press into certain dimensions because individuals in their earth work were able to embody this. Even in the Bible, they were archived in Hebrews 11. The Bible simply calls them elders. It says, now faith is, 11 verse 1 of Hebrews, the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. He said, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, through faith we understand. We were not there, but we understand that the aeons were framed by the word of God. Is that true? So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Then he starts to list those elders. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, women who received their dead back to life. He, he personal, every one of those people represented a dimension of spiritual possibilities. If you want to see the fire of God engulf Kenya in a greater dimension, we must pray that God in heaven would raise individuals and so work upon them that they become accurate portraits of the various dimensions that he seeks to see revealed in Kenya. Are we together? So, our people will continue to make a lot of mistakes in the prophetic, for instance, until there are worthy models that will work in the prophetic accurate, accurately and with authentic grace. That way, it is now easy to know the right from wrong. Are we together? Every animal can roar like the lion, and they are right until the genuine lion roars. 
if they do not know the sound of the genuine lion it is safe to assume anything that sounds like it is it hallelujah no wonder when John came they saw the, the way John was walking and operating they said are you sure this is not the Messiah they came to ask him are you the Messiah he said no I am only the voice of one crying as soon as John saw Jesus he said behold the lamb who takes away the sins of the world Jesus and he began to teach and all the signs of his messiahship was shown in his ministry it was clear it was evident and he had the audacity to tell people follow me and I will make you there has to be someone in Kenya fathers and many people that God will continue to rise who can boldly under God say follow me as I follow Christ and you will be made follow me and you will learn the prophetic accurately follow me as I follow Christ and you will learn authentic apostolic ministry with grace character and balance follow me and you will learn what it means to be a kingdom entrepreneur without compromise blessed by God with the dignity of kingdom integrity there must be models follow me I am a representation of what diligence is do you know this is the whole idea of mantles we shout about mantles and we really do not understand when a mantle comes upon you it changes you to become something very unique so that there is a unique expression of God through you by reason of that mantle that should make you look like somebody in the Bible are we together Many people say, I'm carrying the mantle of Elijah, I'm carrying the mantle. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. When you carry a mantle, the outworkings of the Spirit through your life, the Holy Spirit makes adjustment through your life so that there will be an outworking in your life that is traceable in Scripture. We can say your life is truly a portrait of Abraham's. We can study that pattern and we verify that that mantle is upon you. Did you not see it in the life of Elisha? When he carried the mantle of Elijah, he didn't need to say, I'm carrying it. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the Bible says, he struck the Jordan and he parted Hitha and Tita. And the sons of the prophet says, surely the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. If you must tell people, this man prayed for me, you don't carry the grace. It should speak. Mantles speak. Hallelujah. So that was, the, that was the teaching in the afternoon. Now let's discuss a bit. Wherever we stop, we'll just pray. You know, let me tell you this. If you study, if you study the revival of the 60s and 70s, they had what we call camp meetings where you would dwell sometimes for 30 days for 60 days non-stop are we together doctrine after doctrine with the move of the spirit it was that kind of immersion that produced some of the people who are still standing today like our fathers our generation has a a very scarce just like rain coming upon people it takes a lot to know god and it takes a lot. The investment of time is one of the seeds for growth. You must be willing to invest time. I know we live in a generation where we're in a rush to do everything, justifiably so, because of the times that we live in. But let me tell you, the sacrifice of your time is one of the things you must lay on the altar if you truly desire presence, power, and glory. Hallelujah. By the way, let me salute all of you who have endured here. You know, the Bible says that um, ye who have continued with me, it takes stamina and endurance to receive. Some of you have been here since yesterday. Some of you since morning. You've not even gone anywhere. You remind me of myself in Reinhard Bonke's crusade. Standing for six hours because I desired something genuine hallelujah I stood for six hours after the first day by the second day I said no I may not have the resources 
and even access to meet the man of God at that time. But I said, no matter what it is, I will try to serve. Let me serve that anointing. And I remember they were pushing someone. I saw them pushing people on wheelchairs, coming there. And I said, can I help? They said, well, you are not part of the committee. I said, what, what committee? You know where I came from? I came with, with hunger to receive. I, I wasn't a rebel. I was just, it was polite. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I had the privilege to push one of the wheelchairs. And while I was pushing, I said, Lord, this is how my crusades will be too. I have honored that grace. Without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. I remember standing there. You've heard it in my teaching, so. I stood there from 3 p.m. Nigerian time till almost 9 p.m. I was tired, but I was determined. If you can see me, he came just on the platform like this, preached a very simple message. And when he was done, he needed to take a cup of water so they'll begin to minister the baptism and to minister miracles. And that was when the Lord opened my eyes. It was my first encounter, the, a, the, the manifestation of the similitude of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bird, giant bird, bigger than this, this, um, this tent just hovering around I thought everybody was seeing it now remember I was already a man of God and I was watching this my hunger had touched the heart of the king of kings I was tired but hungry hallelujah and when when that whole experience was over I was already back in the stage I didn't even know when I turned. That was when the Holy Spirit took me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. And darkness hovered round the face of the waters. And Elohim said, light be. And the Lord taught me that the union of the movement of the Spirit and the spoken word is what produces the miraculous. It came by revelation. It was not a lecture. Listen, for someone tonight, you are watching and you are listening because that is the character of the kingdom you must hear and see in the kingdom if you hear alone it is not complete you must hear and see Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the Bible says Philip went and preached Christ in Samaria and the Bible says the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing if it is God you must hear and you must see there is a dimension of the kingdom that can be tasted. He said, oh, taste and see. Not just to believe, it must translate into an experience. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, the next verse says, cried out of people and those who were taken with palsies were healed. And the Bible says there was great joy in Kenya. There was great joy in that city. Are we together? Yes. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Hallowed. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be honored. Hallelujah. We'll discuss very briefly a topic that I captured revival come. Let's discuss the matters of revival now. Revival come. Hallelujah. In every generation, there is a cry and there remains a cry of the Spirit to invade a people, to invade a territory and birth the purposes of the kingdom allocated for that generation 
and for that dispensation. It is the assignment of the men and the women of God in partnership with the word and the spirit. Are we together? To work in synergy and alignment to ensure that the purposes of God as allocated for that dispensation is captured, revealed, and experienced. If that does not happen, then ministry did not happen. Hallelujah. A revival is a possibility. Awakenings are full the history, modern history is full of moments, dramatic moments of the outpouring of the Spirit. Dramatic moments of a heightened awareness of spiritual things. A revival and a season of awakening is a season where men by reason of their alignment and recognition, they grant the word of God and the ministry of the Spirit supremacy over their life and over a predefined territory so a revival happens where god is able to penetrate the limitations in the heart of man and have his right of way and move so mightily among the people bringing repentance bringing revival bringing transformation bringing outpourings bringing advancement that is a revival and every once and again, we see the Spirit crying to move again in the midst of His people. He says, revive your work in the midst of the years to revive it again. Hallelujah. Gideon was a young boy who was in hiding the list of his father's tribe. When he received the visitation from the angel, and he gave him a very strange salutation, calling him a mighty man of fellow. He said, no, 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 no. Don't bring that kind of thing. I have heard of stories. I've heard of several things that have happened. Where are they today? We read through history. We read through the Bible. We read through books. And we hear from our fathers. Moments in history where there was such an awakening, an impartation of grace. Miracles that happened. People encountered God to such a degree and a dimension. You read about the Welsh Revival, for instance. It was said that people would read just the newspaper of the revival happening and right there, fire will just engulf cities. Hallelujah. Awakenings and revivals. And I want you to know, I said it in the morning, I will say it again. In addition to all of the prophetic voices within your land that have spoken, Kenya, you are at the brink of another strange season of awakening and revival. This is true. And this is not only Kenya. This is sweeping across Africa, but there is a formation. We'll get there shortly. The entire East Africa will be engulfed with such fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Revival will no longer be stories that we hear from fathers. But the reality that becomes our experience. Yeah. If you're with me, shout amen. amen. But you see, there are requirements. Listen carefully now. There are requirements that must be met. If we are to host superior dimensions of God. We are to capture these dimensions of power and of grace in our lives, our churches, our regions, our territories, the nation, there are requirements that must be met. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Please give it to us. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Do we have it projected? Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. There is always what to do if you want to host God. There is always what to do. There is a participatory role. It is not all up to God. Uh-uh. God is ever willing, but the formula has always been and remains. The spirit and the bride say come. The spirit and the bride say come. If the spirit says come and the bride does not echo come, 
nothing will be made manifest. The bride there being the church. So the spirit says revival. The bride must also agree and say revival for revival to come. The spirit says healing. The bride must also say healing for healing to come. For many years the spirit has been saying revival. Kenya, revival. Now God has found a people like never before who are agreeing with the spirit. The spirit and the bride say move oh God. The spirit and the bride say heal oh God. The spirit and the bride say invade our homes, invade our offices, invade government. The spirit and the bride say come. Are we together? Now, it is important for us to know um, the requirement if we are to frontier the purposes of God to birth and to preserve revival. It is important for us to understand what God demands from us. The reason I've studied a bit about revivals and the move of God, I'm a student of history and I've studied why revivals die and why revivals did not last. Are we together? Most of it largely because of the humanity of men. That is what I found as the ultimate answer to why revivals die. That the men that frontier these revivals are human. And if they do not understand the dynamics of remaining spiritual, you can abort such a powerful program. Not being bad, just being human. Are we together? The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 6. John chapter 1 and verse 6. It's important for us to understand our corporate assignment as believers. Please look up. We may have different things to do as far as our purpose is concerned in Christ. But it's important for us to understand that all together as the body of Christ, we have a corporate assignment. There is a corporate mandate that is upon us as the church, the bride of Christ. That assignment is in John 1 verse 6 and 7. It says there was a man, just follow carefully, sent from God. Just leave the remaining part of that statement. There was a man sent from God. It's a revelation you need to understand. There was a man. You are a man. But you, Kenya just gave you a natural, um, a, 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 a geographic representation on earth. But the Bible traces where you came from and says you are sent from God. If you do not understand this as a revelation, you will never be able to capture the purposes of God. So, you are from Kenya. You are right sociologically, but spiritually, you may not be right. You are from heaven through Kenya to the earth. Are you seeing that now? Kenya was the physical point of transition where you found yourself. That means you are not limited by the realities that you find within the physical territory. Because the Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. It's an indoctrination you must give yourself. It says there was a man. It is true that I am a man. But there is an implication to my being a man that is godlike based on my origin and based on where I came from. There was a man sent from God. That means my limitation will only be a reflection of the limitation of where I came from, not where I'm passing through. So it is possible that I come physically from a place and a background that has no advantage, but knowing that I was sent from God has a prophetic implication to my life. I can change the narrative physically because I am sent from God. Prophesy to yourself, say sent from God. Notice, the Bible never said there was a man who came from God. Sent. That sent mentality is important for birthing and hosting a revival. 
and it has nothing to do with being an apostle or prophet sent the word sent there means God did not scratch his head and just say wow you've arrived there was a preparation a body has thou prepared for me there was a program the idea of being sent tells you God meticulously planned your arrival it does not matter the biological story that framed your physical arrival sent from God he said when I sent you lackest thou anything not when you went when I sent you are we together now there was a man sent from God when he now arrived Kenya they called him Pastor Julian so they gave you a name for territorial identification but that is not your original name verse 7 gives us your original name an assignment the Bible says the same came for a witness so you call him a preacher or a banker or a governor or a president but the Bible calls them witnesses sent from God as a witness to bear witness of the light look at this that all men through him might believe Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it says but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses he never said you shall be preachers he never said you shall be apostles or prophets or bankers or administrators or, or whatever it is you shall be witnesses unto me now it begins to describe the geography of your witness Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. But then that you are a witness. Unfortunately, those who understand this kingdom come concept are terrorists and people who operate in the dark world. Do you know? A terrorist can be recruited and on account of his assignment, he can go to a medical school. He's in a class with everybody. You call him doctor, but he knows he's not a doctor. He can be studying finance for 10 years and you say, my God, this man is growing. He knows that the, the geography of the witness, he does not confuse it with the assignment. So when he's done, because he's now a doctor, it gives him access to a space. Are we together now? When he now gets there, he takes away his lab coat and takes back the ideology. Now he has the legitimization to execute his purposes. This is the idea. The Bible says you are a witness. If you are a preacher, then you are a witness that shapes the spiritual convictions of the people using the pulpit as a platform. If you are a businessman, for instance, you are now a witness using commerce and whatever it is, business. Are we together now? It is important to understand this. Otherwise, you cannot host certain dimensions of God. We have a corporate mandate. We are witnesses. Someone say, I am a witness. Am a witness. Let the devil hear you. One more time. I, I know you say you are an apostle and a prophet. Don't worry, you are not lying, but you are a witness. It's a superior description. You are a witness. Even Jesus was called the faithful witness. That was the revelation of him to John in the Isle of Patmos. He was called the faithful witness. The moment you know that you are sent and that you are a witness, you know the assignment of a witness? A witness is a validator of a claim. Those in the judiciary here, you know there is no need for a witness until there is a contention. Are we together? If there is a contention, the judge will say, okay, so do you have any witness? Then the witness comes and swears by whatever he believes that he will tell the truth. Then they now listen. And the witness of that person is barren until he has something called an evidence. Your evidence is your token of truthfulness. Are we together? Please listen carefully. So we agree that we are sent from God through Kenya or whatever nation you are coming from. So your nation where you are domiciled is not necessarily your place of origin. 
you came from God and passed through that soil. Are we together? And then he says you were sent from God as a witness. I want you to burn this into your spirit. Yes, you are a Christian, but you are a witness. Something will happen to you when you start calling yourself that name. I am a witness. I am a witness. A validator of a claim. That means everywhere there is confusion. It now becomes my business to find out what is happening. The moment there is any confusion, if there is confusion in ministry, if there is confusion, uh, you know, in the area of spiritual decadence, there is need for a witness. Because every confusion on earth, you've heard me say it, is a letter that Satan is writing through men to God, doubting his supremacy. If a family is poor and suffering, Satan is using that family as a canvas to indict the love and the integrity of God. And God is sitting in heaven waiting for witnesses who will prove to creation that that statement is a lie. So, God now raises a businessman from somewhere in Kenya. For as long as he thinks he's a businessman, he will only make money and relax. He excelled as a businessman but failed as a witness. If that businessman comes and meets the family and says, I have been anointed by God to take you out of this situation, to change your life and change your orientation. Now, that witness has come as a letter to Satan from God. I am still alive and I am almighty. Are we together? If a barren woman, for instance, is afflicted with barrenness, it's not just about demonic affliction. Satan is using her as a canvas to write a letter to God, indicting God, the audience being creation. So God waits for a witness to validate his claim. When a preacher comes and says, in the name of Jesus, that womb be open, and the woman returns with triplets, those are not children. They are replies from God. So whether it is God or Satan, the canvas is man. Is someone learning now? This, it is this understanding that gives definition and purpose to the pursuit of power. Are we together? Your pursuit for power is not just a way of trying to be spiritual. You are equipping yourself with the tools that make you an effective witness. Looking for power or anointing is a useless pursuit until you first understand your witness, even the geography of it. If you now understand you are a witness, then you can contend for spiritual power and the wisdom and all the graces that become the resources for your efficiency. So if your witness requires that you are a billionaire and you are a millionaire, you have failed. You don't just say, I have so much. With respect to what? We have to vet what you have with respect to the geography of your witness. Are we together? If your witness is in the place of the academia and all you have is a master's, you have failed. Because that will not give you access enough so what drives our pursuit and continuity is not ambition it is the desire to be effective witnesses this is the understanding that should send you to school should send you to the finance realm should send you to pray and fast any other thing that is that becomes a sponsor to your your pursuit aside from the desire to be a witness a validator and a revealer of Jesus and his purposes is a total waste of time and you will eventually see that it was a waste today there are many people who talk about revival and the move of God but it is not connected to purpose that is the reason why the moment you begin to be spiritual the first thing you think about is becoming a pastor because that is the only template that looks close to revival our idea of revival is that if it does not end with making you a pastor, it failed. That is a theology that came as a result of we, the mistake of understanding from men of God. A revival should not only end in making people preachers. A revival should end in making people effective witnesses. 
Now listen carefully. Most revivals captured the spirituality part. People prayed, people repented, but most people did not maximize the purpose of many revivals and it died. So at the end of it, there were a few technological advancements here and there, but the church did not sustain that momentum. Anytime you see the move of the Spirit, He's not just raising more men of God, He's raising more witnesses. If, let me tell you this, if Kenya has only preachers, you are in trouble. Let me repeat it again. Whether you understand or not, just listen first. If Kenya has only preachers, you are in trouble. If Kenya has only businessmen, you are in trouble. If Kenya has only political leaders without any spiritual inclination, you are in trouble. Are we together? There must be the production and the spread of witnesses across every strata of human existence. That is the true spirit of revival. It starts with repentance, brokenness. Are we together? A restoration to godliness but it does not stop there this is what we miss about revivals the moment there is an outpouring people falling down healings and miracles and people love the Lord we say revival has come but we do not know that revival comes with a letter witnesses arise that is the letter that revival brings if you do not receive that letter you will enjoy the spiritual glamour the falling down and it dies off and people return back if you must capture revival genuinely it will take more than just an outpouring with healings and miracles it must translate to producing witnesses where someone can tell you after 10 years that I came for Rema Fest and there was such a revival and then you say so how did it make you a businessman I thought you would make you a preacher he said that's the point it was because of that revival I own this bank today. Are we together? What is the purpose of that bank? To make sure programs like this never happen with stress again. What is the purpose of that bank? To give you an influence to step into that system where you can become... Listen, read your Bible. Look at Daniel. Daniel was in, it, was in Babylon. Is that true? It was the exaltation of Daniel that preserved the purposes of God. I hope you know that. Look at Joseph. Look at Moses. All of these are the men of God we call today, but you have to study the structure of their witness. Believers, we have for a long time limited our understanding of the move of God and the power of God to only issues and matters of repentance which is wonderful and in order of priority that should be it we repent we love the Lord and the spiritual energy we are receiving through prayer and fasting needs to find expression and since we are not guided to know what to do with it we, went, we go to the pulpit that's why several people today who are on the pulpit should be in the bank Many people today who are in the pulpit struggling to prophesy are not seeing anything because the grace there, listen carefully, it doesn't mean they are bad. The man is saying, but I, I have so much spiritual energy. I don't know what to do with it. And we tell them that means God is calling you. You are right, but to do what? <laughs> so listen, the average young man here, by the time fire begins to fall, all that comes to your mind is prophet, apostle. That means I'm starting a church. It may not be so. That means the witness has been identified. Listen, if you do not discern this, you can regret a genuine revival that comes because it will produce more error than it was even before the revival came. Every time there is an outpouring of the spirit, there is a side effect. If not balanced with understanding, for the people to understand its purpose, 
it will lead to a lot of things. You will find somebody who should not resign from an oil and gas firm. God is keeping him there as a Joseph, but he will resign and go to the pulpit. And it's not by God. He's only trying to give his passion expression. Are we together? Hear me. I know many people today who have left places that were their places of assignment all in search for God and their idea of working for God is to preach. And many of them, you know what I'm saying is not a lie. Many of them today are living miserable lives wondering, okay, so Lord, I was doing better off. You will hear them say, as a CEO, now I came here and I don't know what I'm doing because you have lost your bishopric. There is ease when you find your place of glory. Are we together? Now, don't get me wrong. There are people legitimately that God has sent them to make those kinds of sacrifices. That is true. But the point is, as we celebrate the spirit of revival, it is important for us to understand the nature of the move of God and what it seeks to produce. The move of God seeks to produce more than prayer warriors. The move of God seeks to provide, to produce more than fasting giants. The move of God seeks to produce more than war giants. The move of God seeks to restore weaknesses. Every time the program of God suffers, it's not the absence of men of God. It is the absence of witnesses. You can be an excellent preacher and a poor witness. How do you know you are a witness? When you can use your life, your resources, your access, and your platform to reveal Jesus, to glorify him, and to advance his kingdom. The difference between a successful person and a witness is that in the life of a witness, kingdom come is the agenda that drives you. Are we together? So, let me give perspective to a few things and then we'll pray. In order of priority, what does revival come to do? Let me tell you this. The first assignment of the spirit of revival is to stir up God consciousness God consciousness a passion and a hunger for spiritual things across a territory that means if the spirit of revival falls upon Kenya the first thing we should see not the only thing but the first thing is evangelism like never before what if it's evangelism the name given to the entire process that leads an individual to find Jesus Christ and to be established in the faith. Are we together? World evangelization. When the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles, the first thing we see was 3,000 people in one night, in one meeting, coming to Jesus. So in order of priority, the spirit of revival would draw the hearts of men back to the cross. Oh, I love this. I love this. Back to the cross. Back to Jesus. So someone who would ordinarily not pay attention to spiritual things because of that fire of revival, through the miracles, the signs, the wonders, and all that happens across Kenya, you will see men both great and small bowing to the Lordship of Jesus. That is the spirit of revival. Let me tell you this, I'm saying it prophetically. A time will come when people will be in their offices and they will just be prompted by the Spirit to go online and they can hear a five minute message that on their own will break them there. That is the CEO of that multi-billion firm crying to Jesus. You will come in and think he's sick and say, sir, can I help you? He says, no. I have found something that my heart longs for more than money world evangelization 
is the first biblical index that revival has come. There is a heightened awareness of God. There is a heightened awareness, passion towards spiritual things. A day will come in Kenya where when it is service time, you will think people are running because there's riot going on somewhere. Where are you going to? They will say, come, let us go to the house of God. Regardless the denomination, fire burning upon every altar. You run away from one church, you will meet Jesus in the other one, waiting for you. One thing for sure you will find is Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you decide to lock your door and run away from church, you will turn and find him there, personally. And he will tell you, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. These things that I show you right because they are true. Many people will have genuine encounters. I'm talking of non-Christians. It's already happening across the globe. Kenya, we must pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, let the spirit of revival translate to massive salvation of souls. Hallelujah. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. On the streets, in the schools, your campuses. Some of you, God is preparing you as witnesses. Even in that respect. That through your life, territories will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. May it be so in the name of Jesus. Yes. The spirit of revival. That spiritual awakening. Bringing repentance. Where people are breaking free from carnality and the works of the flesh. And genuinely serving God acceptably. You would see all kinds of things, addictions and all kinds of strongholds. Break away from people so that they can soar and serve the spirit acceptably. You know a revival has come because there will always be a restoration of righteousness and the patterns of true holiness. Are we together? The kingdom of God has three expressions, the Bible says. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Where you will not, you will not be here nor there. God will bring you to a point where you can make, you make a genuine decision. I am a child of God any day. I am a child of God any time. On jeans, I am a child of God. On suit, I am a child of God. Wearing my lab coat, I am a child of God. Wearing my nightgown, I am a child of God. It is my singular identity. I do not plan to compromise on it. The spirit of revival. Is someone learning? Yes. So world evangelization, evangelization across the entire Kenya. And it is everybody's responsibility to see that everyone is saved, including the children. Do not make the mistake of negotiating with the devil like Pharaoh did, try to do to Moses. Remember, when Moses advocated the exodus of Israel from Egypt, Pharaoh said, all right, we'll allow you go. But your women and your children, keep them back. Moses said, no way. The women and the children represent the future. Without women, they can't be children. Without children, there is no future. So he's saying, you go, but let your future suffer. Moses said, no, we are all going. Someone prophesied, say, we are all going. We are all going. Kenya, it should not be the fathers that go alone. We are all going. We are all going. In the name of Jesus. The little children coming to Jesus that you will see a child of age 12 with fire prophesying by the power of God laying hands on the sick parents I hope you are not saying he's too small there are little children in occult who are less than 10 years who have brought havoc and destruction they were not too small to be used by the devil Joash was a king at age 8 Josiah was a king at age nine. Are we learning? Yes. The spirit of revival. We must, by the spirit of revival, bring nations, even this nation, 
to the Lordship of Christ. It is important that we understand that the purpose of power is to empower us to be faithful witnesses. So for every grace that you have received and will be receiving tonight, don't just fall down and stand up and say, wow, God came to me. Understand that there is purpose. It's an awakening. Are we together? For some of you, you may fall under the anointing and stand up and say, what happened? It's after two weeks, you will see that something is driving you to go and register a new company. That's where it came from. For someone, as that fire comes upon you, by the time you go to church on Sunday, it will be fire upon that altar. I'm being as simple as possible because I want everybody to be part of this. God desires to invade Kenya. And let me tell you the truth. From the front here, right to the back, across outside of this tent and those following you can make yourself available and say lord i am available i am usable don't do it without me you can do it but let me be part of your program i cried many times and i told the lord i said as you are blessing people and increasing people please remember that i am available i know you can do without me you are god but let it please you that i become part of your program let it never be that my bishop Ricanoda will take through my non-participation and my carelessness. Can I tell you the truth? In this end times, there are many people's assignments that will be given to others. Because you see, being a faithful witness is like a relay. Your faithfulness is what makes for the efficiency of another person. So if you are not faithful in your witness, you will cause someone else their efficiency. Are we together now? God will not sit down and allow you, say for instance, as a preacher, 5,000 souls have been connected to your anointing and your effective witness. You can't be playing games with them and wasting their time. God loves you, but he loves them too. He will not trap 5,000 people and leave them under an unhealthy shepherd. There are many scatterings that will not be demonic. It will be God himself picking his people to a place of safety where they can grow. You mark what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. So, I'm about to preach, but someone who is to give me the mic has refused to come. What is he doing to me? He's delaying my efficiency. I am ready to preach. God is ready to heal, to deliver, to bring the word. But just because of one person's not his inability to get the mic look how many thousands of people will suffer that is how it is there are some of you here by now if you had worked with God you would have been kingdom millionaires to bring a lot and your your refusal and your laxity God has subjected you to pray to fast God told you learn in the uh, get books on business and finances you refused and said no now there is a pastor who should not have backslidden if you were a sponsor to keep him alive and keep him strong because you refused to rise he was discouraged and he left now hear me please everyone i want you to think of what kenya has suffered because of your spiritual inefficiency preacher imagine what would have happened to your members if for the last two years all that they heard was accuracy of doctrine taught with character and the integrity of heart more than marketing yourself by now some apostles sent in your ministry would have started rising but they are still children right now trapped by your ineffective witness are we together maybe there's a man of god here god gave you an instruction or a businessman sow a seed that would have opened you to a new level of wealth your laxity in obedience stopped you from rising because there was an assignment the purpose of the wealth that pharaoh gave you is to build the tabernacle in the wilderness never forget if pharaoh gives you gold free of charges because god will make demand of it later there's someone in government if you had studied politics 
and God granted you grace to ascend, you would have occupied a position of influence right now in government that would have allowed you to become a door for the purposes of God to pass through. But your laxity in growth and rising has pegged you and pegged the program of God. Are we together? Young lady, if you had stopped jumping around, you would have settled down early and God would have revealed to you that one of your major assignments is your womb, the prophet that that womb will carry. You wouldn't have secured a course that would have caused you trouble right now. But right now there is a prophet who should have arrived five years ago. But because of your refusal to walk, that prophet is still trapped in the realm of the spirit. Hear me. Failure to be an effective witness does not just affect you. It's a relay. There are many destinies who depend on your efficiency for their advancement. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if you run away from influence, if you run away from prayer, there is an intercessor that if you were serious with God in your prayer and fasting, like Anna the prophetess, there are certain dimensions of God that would have arrived in Kenya, but simply because of your spiritual laxity. You have refused to rise. There are Deborahs, there are Annas, there are Simeons. Don't delay the arrival of Jesus. He gave you a ministry to pray the word to arrive. Listen, when I understood the implication of being obedient as a faithful witness, I vowed that as far as it depends on me, nobody's life will be held down simply because of delay in my manifestation. So I will fast as much as I should. I will pray as much as I should. I will stay and humble myself. I will throw my ego a thousand times knowing that I cannot allow my ego trap thousands of people. I will learn what I do not know and humble myself to know what I need to know as I ought to know it for the sake of kingdom come. This is the life of a witness. And this is what the revival that is coming seeks to produce. If I don't tell you this, we are just going to pray and jump around for nothing and you will leave only to find out that you enjoyed a few days of a mighty move of God and then you return back to your vomit. Don't feel bad, but man of God, how many dead bodies should not have died if you had accessed the power allocated for your witness? Imagine how many graves today, people who are mourning and say, but God, you told me this person will leave. When God said that person will leave, he said it based on the fact that a witness somewhere should have risen to the level of anointing whose grace can preserve. But that witness refused to fast and pray and was there around in competition and not knowing somebody's life was hanging upon your anointing. Are we together? There is a prophet here who through your life, nations and territories would have found direction. Decades of confusion brought under alignment with one accurate prophetic word. But you have refused to be serious. You have refused to be a witness. And so the error in the prophetic is there scattering families and deceiving people and people cannot go forward. Whereas your accuracy and your precision, accessing spiritual things, would have brought direction. There is a worship minister. Where are my worship people? Only God. Do you know songs are ladders in the realm of the spirit? Every move of God has songs that men will use to climb into realms. There are many of you here because of your spiritual laxity. The songs that you should have received from the throne that will fan the flames of revival till now they are still hanging in the realm of the spirit. You cannot give us the new song, songs of deliverance that will sing. Because the worshiper is just a musician, not a person of the altar.
Just help us under the anointing. The Spirit of God is moving here. There is an awakening that is happening within your spirit. As you are hearing me preach, that fire from the throne is consuming every dross and giving way. And God is saying, listen, Kenya, I came a few years ago, man of God, you missed that move. Now I am coming again. I hope you will be sensitive. Listen, in Genesis 28, the Lord came to Jacob, but Jacob was careless. He aborted such a glorious encounter. He saw a ladder and angels ascending and descending. Every time you see the movement of angels, there is a message. And he did not discern it. And he got up and said, surely the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. This is surely the gates of heaven, the house of God. Do you know, for not discerning purpose, Joseph would pay the price with 20 years in the house of Laban. By the time God would come again, in Genesis 32, he had suffered enough to learn his lesson. The Bible says he dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle. When he was alone, a man came again and he held him. He said, I made that mistake. I will not make it again. I will not let you. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. What is your name? I am Jacob. Thou shalt no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For I have said, Prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. The Bible says he touched the whole of his thigh and he blessed him. The sun arose and he called that place Peniel, the face of God. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. The Bible says, this is the generation of them that seek thy face, O Jacob. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He says, he that had clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, the same shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. And then he says, this is the generation of them that seek you in the similitude of Jacob. Hear me. When I read God's generals, I knew I was reading about a lineage I was part of. When I read, they have gone to be with the Lord. We must immortalize their impact. There is a part of the anthem of my nation that says that the labors of our heroes past should not be in vain. Let it not be that the fathers and their labor in Kenya will suddenly die because of a careless generation. Many have joined the cloud of witnesses. The T.L. Osborns, the Catherine Kuhlmans, they are watching Kenya from heaven and saying, come on, daughter of Israel, arise. You are the one carrying my mantle. Don't keep people down. The healing evangelist, arise. The businessman, arise. 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 You have seen this in your dreams and your visions. Don't leave it just in the realm of the spirit. Let the spirit and the bride tonight say come. There are mega churches to be built. Not just to make a name. But the king's business requires haste. Please hear me. Don't pray for the anointing. Until you are ready to be a witness. Don't pray for power. That power is useless. Until you understand its assignment. In empowering you to be a witness. Hear me. Years ago, when Lester Sumro went to meet Smith Wigglesworth, he called him and he told him, he said, listen, make sure you do not die with this mantle. He says, when you are old, find young men. Find young men. Everybody cannot be on serious. Find young men and transfer this grace upon them. Hear me. Mantles are falling here tonight. 
anointings are falling here tonight for the kings to be born for revival to return for the kings to arise for revival to return hey ali ali o ali o ali ali o Ali Ali O, Ali O, Ali O, Ali Ali O. I'm about to pray. Please hear me. Let me share with you one of the encounters I saw. I was in a vision many many years ago, and it was an elevated position like several stories and I saw an endless sea of people just like this and they were crying and they were sobbing and in that vision I stood and I was watching and it's like the crowd zoomed and came close to me and I said why are you crying I remember clearly they said no food and no water I said no food and no water who is the cause and they pointed to me I said me I love you too much I can't be that wicked to keep you in such a situation but then I realized that that generation of people were waiting and I made up my mind in that vision it became like some wicked people were chasing me and they wanted to harm me so I was more concerned about my safety than those people but I made up my mind in that vision I said I will open that door if I perish I perish that was what I said as soon as I opened the door here was this giant gray bearded man now I know he was representing the Holy Spirit big giant man he said give me your hands I will walk with you and my tiny hands and he held it and he said let's go and we began to jump from building to building to building when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me listen to me You've heard me say it many times. Light at his brilliance came from him to me. It transformed my life. It took me more than one year to recover from that experience. And then in another encounter, he spoke to me that to every nation and every region that I will send you to, the light that came from me to you, there must be someone in that meeting that that same light will come upon that individual we are about to pray please hear me there are many of you what you are seeing tonight you are transporting that experience to your various ministries it will be another dimension of the ministry of the spirit through ordinary men but by a mighty God undeniable Hear me, there are some of you here who are witnesses in ministry, like we call it. Be faithful preachers. Go and do your assignment. Serve God's people with integrity. Stop playing games. Stop playing games. Games of clothes, games of English, games of this and that. Fold all those things. Let the old go. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I understood like a child revival comes revival is a time where we fold the old and we are ready for the new some of you may need to respectfully speaking return back to your altars and correct a lot of imbalances and say I, it's a renewed me that has come now I am ready to serve God's people the meal of his wisdom and knowledge according to Jeremiah 3 15 and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they shall feed you with wisdom and with knowledge there are business people who must begin to pray Lord give us the end time strategies for wealth let me just spare me five minutes let me give you the formation of the end time army please sit down let me give you that formation I have to do that and then we'll pray the revival that comes will essentially produce three categories of people 
I need to give it to you. These are prophetic revelations that God gave me. And they are also consistent with the patterns in scripture. The end time army. According to. The blueprints that God gave me. And this is consistent with the scripture. Will be made up of largely three categories of people. I want you to listen. This is a prophetic message to Kenya. To Africa. And to anyone who is interested in the end time move of God. When the power of God comes. When the move of God sweeps across Kenya. There will be three groups of people. That will emerge from that move. Number one. There will be an emergence of prophetic intercessors. Please write it down. There will be a strange emergence of prophetic intercessors. Men who understand the dynamics of the altar. Ezekiel chapter 22 please. From verse 30. Please give it to us quickly and then we will begin to pray. Ezekiel 22, 30 and 31. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. The result, therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own ways have I recompensed upon their head, saith the Lord. Listen to me. There will be an imagine from old and young people the spirit of prayer not the prayer of give me tea and give me bread the prayer of bridging the gap between one season and the other prophetic midwives people who understand territorial dimensions of prophetic intercession more than a need driven prayer life men who will pray dimensions of the power of God to come upon territories God will give men territories in the spirit as a spiritual inheritance to pray the program of God. Number one, prophetic intercessors. And let me tell you this. I wish we had time. Women, hear me. Women will play a major role in this emergence. Please sit down. And I will tell you why. Because you see, a woman in the Bible is called a mystery. A woman embodies a spiritual reality. Are we together? Among the many realities that a woman embodies is that a woman is a gate. Every time a life wants to be transported from one dimension to find material expression, the authorized medium is a woman. So women prophetically are gates. They stand as spiritual portals that can allow or disallow spiritual realities. The first person to see Jesus when he resurrected was a woman. I hope you know. When all the men ran away, there she was. And the virtue that helped her to find Jesus was patience. The disciples came and looked and they left. But she kept looking until she saw one in the garden. And she came and said, do you know where they have taken my Lord? And she looked well and said, Rabboni. She wanted to touch me. She said, do not touch me. I have not yet ascended. So the coronation service was not even held. And yet she saw him. He said, go and tell the brethren. The first evangelist from scripture was a woman. Please hear me. Many of you will catch this spirit of prophetic intercession there are many prayer groups that will arise in Kenya apostolic and prophetic platforms there are many churches that indeed will become a house of prayer not just a house of discussion alone I'm aware of a few we're talking with apostle the man of God and he was telling me of the phenomenal things that are happening you know and I've been by reason of what I do I'm connected to a lot of people who have been given grace in the area of prophetic intercession and I can tell you Kenya if prophetic intercessors do not arise that which you see will only stop in the realm of the spirit Jesus did not just come 
it took a woman called Anna the prophetess to pray him to the earth and when he came and she saw him she said my eyes have seen the consolation of Israel for over 60 years she prayed his arrival everything that must happen in Kenya transported from the spirit to the earth realm must come through prayer pray justice to Kenya pray a new season to Kenya prayer gives you the liberty to allow and to disallow you are not that powerless Kenya if you know the power of prayer he says Elijah was a man of like passion he prayed that there be no rain you can pray that there be no violence you can pray that there be no poverty you can pray that there be no destruction and God will honor you by reacting by raising people in the earth that honor that prayer request the emergence of prophetic intercessors let me give you this the second and the third are we together because at the end of this discussion every one of this crowd you must be in one or more or all these categories but it's impossible for you to be without a jurisdiction for some of you I just define your ministry for the next three years prophetic intercessors number two the end time army will capture the next set of people called the sent ones these are the ones who are found in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. They are the ones that he calls sheep among wolves. They are the ones empowered to penetrate the cosmos and to use wisdom and creativity and intelligence. Are we together? To penetrate systems and structures until they establish the dominion of Christ. Behold, I send you forth as sheep among wolves. That's a dangerous statement because a wolf does not befriend a sheep. It eats the sheep. The nature of your assignment is highly wisdom dependent. Now watch this. When the anointing is released, the Bible says Christ is revealed as the wisdom of God and as the power of God. The anointing of God is not always the power of God. It can come to you as the wisdom of God granting you insight on how to navigate your way through the cosmos these are the groups of people who will rise as ceos these are the groups of people who will rise as educators these are the groups of people they are sent the only way to be a sheep among wolves is to wear the clothes of a wolf your appearance looks like a wolf but your heart is the heart of a sheep the appearance of a wolf will give you access but the heart of the sheep will give you room to make changes. Listen, and he says, for you to be an effective sheep among wolves, the strategy is that you must be as wise as a serpent and as gentle as a dove. God would not tell you to be as wise as a serpent, just as a snake. There is nothing so much to learn from a snake. A snake is a reptile that doesn't have so much to study. That is a coded prophetic language. To be as wise as a serpent, for you to understand that, you have to understand the apostolic structure of how kingdom come works. Let me give you a little preview. Acts chapter 7 and verse 22, speaking about Moses. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Give us Acts 7 22, please. Media. Acts chapter 7 and verse 22. I'd like you to read it if you see it projected. One, two, read. What did Moses learn? The wisdom of Egypt. What is the symbol of Egypt? The serpent. Egypt has always represented the world system and he's saying for you to be an effective sent one into the system you will need to study the system the modus operandi of the cosmos it would take more than prayer to be effective as this category of people Moses whose assignment was purely spiritual had to be sent to Egypt what did he need the wisdom of Egypt for? read about joseph joseph again egypt have you not seen that every time 
God wants to prepare the people and that kingly dimension it was in Egypt prosperity Egypt wisdom Egypt Cain did well as far as priesthood is concerned he knew how to offer sacrifices that will go to heaven but he did not understand this second dimension please hear me because I'm balancing it now the first group of people are doing well but most of them do not know there is a second and a third group so most believers have stopped as intercessors no there is a second group the sent ones and for these ones it will take more than prayer in addition to prayer they will need to outsource the wisdom of Egypt for some of you to be effective you will need to go and sit under secular knowledge to your universities and the rest the wisdom of Egypt you need to learn to give you access hear me do you know the nation of Israel never were a people who had territorial advantage until David came they were excellent in terms of their priesthood but they did not understand the principles of dominion territorial dominion their focus was priesthood every time you see cities and nations that were built they were heathenistic people the first person to build a city in the Bible was Cain read your Bible Cain failed in the area of priesthood he could not offer sacrifices but as far as dominion territorial is concerned he built a city and named it after his son Enoch the second person to build a city was Nimrod Cush then Egypt, then Babylon. None of them called upon the name of the Lord. They failed in their priesthood, but they understood territorial dominion. Believers now understand priesthood, prayer, fasting, consecration, but penetrating cosmos is an area we are just learning. That is why we are spiritual, but we remain victims of policies, victims of people, one policy can shut the church completely with all our prayer because there has to be people represented at every strata of human activities who are represented, who, are, who, who stand to protect the interest of God's program, albeit empowered by priesthood. It was David that restored the order of king, priest, prophet. That tripartite formation and build a city that we call the city of David. David said, no, we are kings and priests. You have been priests alone. We need to restore that territorial dominion. Amen. These are the second groups of people. Technocrats, politicians, businessmen, captains of industry, men who understand the power and the purpose of influence, people who are excellent and competent. You are a wolf what you are a sheep the wolf is your PhD you are carrying the sheep is that you are a prophet within the wolf is that you are a professor but a student comes to your office and he says listen young man this is not an academic issue this thing is a spiritual issue and you let me show you I'm not only a professor in the name of Jesus I command that spirit the cloth of a wolf is your MBBS. You are a professor of surgery and you are watching demons take the life out of a man and you drop your knife quickly and say, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Is someone learning now? Please don't forget this teaching. That when revival comes, it will separate people into three prophetic positions. Number one, prophetic intercessors. Number two, the sent ones. Those who are called sheep among wolves. If all you carry is prayer or all you carry is Bible recitation, you will be disappointed. The cosmos does not understand that language. 
your prayer and your word bank will build your spiritual capacity but it's your competence and your excellence that will give you room then when you get there you can promote kingdom come as your agenda the last set and then we'll pray hmm. if someone has been blessed tonight shout amen, amen. are you ready the last set of people that this revival will bring is found in Haggai chapter 1 from verse 4 to 8. They are called kingdom financiers. Listen, 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 listen. Don't assume you understand what I'm saying. Just pay attention. We're wrapping up. Kingdom financiers are not those who like money. Kingdom financiers are not those who are obsessed about money. Kingdom financiers are those who have made a covenant with themselves to become God's treasurers. The last one disappointed him. He's still looking for treasurers. Men who are trusted with the wealth of nations. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lies waste. We are reading to eight. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. Let's continue. Ye have sown much, you bring in little. You eat but have not enough. Ye drink but you are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages earneth to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Uh -huh. Go up. Hold on. Hold on. Every time a verse looks too simple, you don't understand it just read carefully go up the mountain what is the next statement bring wood what is the next statement build the house so hold on you don't get wood from a mountain you get wood from the forest so the kind of wood he's talking about it's not the wood that you get from a forest. It says, go up to the mountain. You want to know that mountain? Jesus took Satan to an exceeding high mountain. And from that mountain, he showed him the glories of the world and the riches thereof. And he said, bow to me and I will give you. Mountains in the Bible represent, among other things, fears of influence and stratas of human activities. He says, go up to the mountain, rise in influence, be valuable and rise to a point where you sit as a gatekeeper. The reward for being that valuable is there is a kind of wood you need, resources. He says, when you get that wood, be mindful that the purpose of going up in the first place is to be able to build the house of the Lord and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified kingdom financiers are more than business people kingdom financiers are more than investors kingdom financiers are men who have done transactions in the spirit and god has placed a sworn blessing upon them to trust them with the resources of nations for his end time project it takes more than business help them please help that gentleman it takes more than listen listen you can be rich by being valuable you can be wealthy. You know the loss of wealth already. Right? You're giving and all of that. And then value. Turn your value into products and services. Package it with excellence and serve it to a targeted consumer base. That's what you call business. You know the loss. But wealth, kingdom wealth and end time wealth is more than buying and selling. There is a dimension of wealth. That is not an achievement. It's a trust. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I was in an encounter one time. Please watch this. We're wrapping up. And the Lord told me there are seven dimensions of wealth that are coming to the body before Christ returns. And as it is, the church is only in the third dimension. And then one time I was praying, Pastor, true story. And then my ceiling just disappeared and then i see this creature standing before me 
genuinely i'm telling you it's not a i'm not cooking up a story if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking are we together i'm seeing this creature the eyeball was as big as one human head so imagine two and it was looking at me it looked like a dinosaur it had a tail and from that vision the tail had its own life it could detach from the creature and still be alive and it was looking at me with fierce red eyes and he said so you think you can bring God's people into abundance after that encounter the heavens open I have seen the spirit that controls Tyre Tyre and Sidon are not just physical places they represent spiritual locations where the treasures of the earth reside it is more than buying and selling there is a threshold level of wealth that when you touch it is either you have done business with Satan or you have come to God and you have received that trust believe me no matter how much you buy and sell you know it more than I do the kings of the earth do not just become wealthy by intelligence it is their fraternity with this she goddess called Babylon Revelations 18 19 read about the destruction of Babylon Babylon the great is falling is falling is falling in one hour her destruction had come the Bible says the kings of the earth who have fornicated with her that she goddess called Babylon there was a relationship they had with Babylon to be that prosperous there is a threshold level of wealth that does not come just by buying and selling there is a place of value but there is transaction in the realm of the spirit if you return back oh Samaria and by this time tomorrow you are prosperous is more than buying and selling you have tapped into a dimension that is higher than commerce I'm saying this because part of the mantles that will fall in this place these three categories some of you God brought you here tonight because you are in one or more or all it is possible to be in all that you are a prophetic intercessor at the same time you are sent apostolically into the cosmos and then by your alignment and love for God and his house and his purposes you have stood to a position where he can trust you with the wealth of nations this I have seen and this is true in scripture. Kenya, prepare for that tripartite formation of prophetic intercessors and the sent ones apostolically commissioned to go and bear fruit by showing the excellency. Is it not in your Bible to the intent that now unto principalities and powers may be made manifest by the church the multifaceted wisdom of God? then there are financiers there are men and women who will come and meet our fathers of faith and say how much does it take to run the program of God for one year and they will write it off like they are buying a recharge card listen and it will no longer be the issue of ah I'm wearing Louis Vuitton or Versace wonderful but there's a superior purpose go up the mountain bring wood Build the house that I may glory in it. I rest my case tonight. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Are you ready to receive? Rise up and let's pray. Be glorified in my life, Lord. Be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. thank you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, make that a prayer. Be glorified. Be glorified.
were prophesying Galatians 1.24. That's what you just sang. And they glorified God in me. That you are ready to exalt Jesus. In Koinonia, we call it Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. This is that kingdom come agenda. It's time to top, stop playing church. It's time to just stop wasting time. The king's business requires haste. Are we together? I've shared a number of things tonight that will establish three prayer points and then I speak over your life and we're done for the night. Prayer point number one. Lord, I obtain grace to be an effective witness. More than a preacher. Go ahead and pray. More than just my spiritual excellence, I obtain grace. Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. Shali pras kede bala hashkada banda kosiya. Embra katos kambi ke bra kate ka bala katos kedia. Are there people of prayer in Kenya? Shalen de ke bra katos kambi ke bra katos kaliata. Preachers pray. Businessmen pray. Time for a mighty move of the spirit in and across Kenya, in and across East Africa. Go ahead and pray. I obtain grace to be an effective witness as that revival fire comes. It's the fire that makes me a witness. Go ahead and pray. Jesus in the name of Jesus I'm about to pray over your life please hear me my God such a strong anointing here now please hear me just a few minutes tomorrow night by the grace of God will be a miracle service where we'll have the time dedicated to minister to the needs of God's people but right now what is happening tonight is an ignition. 
there are many of you who have come and there are graces that you must partake of are we together in few minutes I want that grace to fall upon you now for those who that grace will fall upon like we did in the afternoon please may I request if you can to just bring them here and I speak over their lives and we just move prophetically hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you